Hey everybody, how you doing? Middle of the day here. People say, whenever I say that, people have known me to say this now. When I do, it means that we're here with someone very special, a special guest. And I have to say, man, you know, it's not a lot of times that I uh, get a little, a little nervous around somebody. It's not a lot of times when I think that these things feel a little weird because I admire this person or I've seen this person a lot. I just got through talking to our guest today that we're going to be uh, showing you in a little bit. I was talking about how he pops up every time I go to my channel. I can't stop looking at this guy because he's there looking at me. Please welcome, you know him. If you watch us, you definitely know this guy, Mr. James Ralph, or you might know him as the angry video game nerd. How you doing, man? Hey, good. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, you know, I was saying that every video that you make is recommended to me. So whenever I go to my channel, I see you more than I see my own videos, man. <laughs> but I want to, I, I really am honored to have you here, man. I've, I've watched you for years and years and years and have really admired everything you've done. You put, you, you're one of the people that I've always said, you know, when I look at a video on YouTube, I say, man, look at this guy's production right here. Look at the effort that he puts into this. Look at, look at the presentation and the knowledge he puts into it. And you've been one of those people for a long time that I've always said you are not only someone I recommend people to, but I've also been inspired by what you do. Thank you for being here. Oh, wow. Yeah, that, that's so awesome. Yeah, thank you again. <laughs> you know, I want you to talk about something that you recently released. And you know, this, this is something that you're promoting right now. Uh, we're going to promote the Angry Video Game Nerd 1 and 2 Deluxe edition of, uh, <laughs> of your video game. Uh, I'm going to show people a little bit of that, if, if that's okay. Can I do that? Sure, yeah. Yeah, people, this is an actual Angry Video Game Nerd video game that you can find right now on PlayStation and Xbox. EVG and Deluxe now available on Xbox and PlayStation. Blast and curse your way to the all-new mysterious final. Now it's not the game that's bad, it's just you! <laughs> so, is that you doing the narration right there? Uh, no, it isn't. Yeah. No, it's great, I, though. I, I wish I could tell you who it is, I'm not sure. You want to tell us more about the game? Something yeah, I might well, not be mentioning? See, so it was, uh... A lot of people worked on it over the years. It's been redone many times. Uh, you know, like things will be changed, uh, things will be added. Uh, um, it was originally uh, done by Screw Attack uh, with uh, Sam Beddoes from Freak Zone Games. He's the guy who did all the design and everything. And then um, uh, Screenwave has been doing it recently, so they put out like the new edition of it. And uh, um, we're, we're planning to do a third one eventually. So I'm, that's the one I'm really looking forward to because that'll be like a, you know, a fresh new thing. What is it about the third one that, uh, I mean, you said it's a fresh new thing, but what is it about the third one that you're really looking forward to besides that? Um, just kind of like just starting over with like a, you know, first person view or something like that. Kind of, you know, that one looks a lot like an NES game. Now maybe we might make it look like a Super Nintendo game or who knows. Yeah. So... I mean, I don't know how much you had to do with the process of putting it on other platforms, but what's it, what is the process of putting this on a, a major console like Xbox and, and PlayStation? Oh, I wish I could tell you. That's why they do it, not me. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. well, I hear you, man. Yeah. That, that must be nice to have something that's based on your creation, your personality, and based on you, and you just sit back and let people do all the hard work making you famous. Yeah, basically. Uh, when the first uh, fan game was ever made, I was honored with that just alone. I was like, well, that's kind of cool because it came full circle. The nerd reviews bad games, then someone made like a like an intentionally sort of bad but very fun game on the nerd. And that was the, like a fan game. Mm -hmm. And then there was like maybe 10 other or more. There was a bunch of fan games. And then I was like, wow, this is this is pretty amazing that people are putting the effort to do this. And then... Uh, Freak Zone came along and they wanted to do this game and then the second one and then that was like well now we're doing like a, an official thing and um, with like a whole production to it and everything so I never expected it would go this far at all. <laughs> no nah, man that must be a real honor congratulations on that. Oh thank you. You know but I gotta ask you though so between all of we're gonna talk about movies with you in a little bit you know especially <laughs> in the area of horror but uh, between all the video games that you've collected, 
in all the movies that you've collected, is there any more room in that damn house of yours at all, man? <laughs> Anywhere? No, not really. <laughs> now it's uh, filled with kid stuff, so I need to make room all the time. So <laughs> I guess that's true, man. I have so many friends that have kids now, and that to- that I have a friend whose uh, kids have taken over so much that. The toys are at the bar now. They're next to the alcohol. <laughs> so <laughs> I, can, I can only imagine how it is for you to be a collector and also have kids that are collecting things of their own right now. How, you have two little girls, right? Yeah, that's right. One's seven and one's three at the moment. What's it like being a, a, a creator such as yourself and sometimes doing occasionally some, I guess, the most adult that you get with this is probably the language that's that, that's in what you do. But you have two young girls, and uh, you have a wife. So what what's it like balancing uh, what you do right now with the kids and the family life? Um. Oh, with uh, yeah, like uh, it's like I'd like to show her my videos someday, but it's like I don't want to have to explain like you know some of the language is okay. It's kind of like well. I mean, it's not okay, but I can explain it. Be like, okay, look, you don't go around saying fuck. That's just not a word. (laughs) (laughs) But then when I'm like saying something about like, oh, this this game is like, you know, um, this this game's mom is getting bent over, getting fucked, or something like that, and it's like, you know, it's (laughs) sexual stuff. It's like I don't want to have to explain that, you know. (laughs) So. Yeah. So how do you keep the kids? How do you keep the kids separated from that, man? And like, how old is your oldest daughter? Uh, seven. Seven. So now she's coming up, man, and she's probably getting into the creative things and stuff. And look, as we all know, like we think it's a little bit older, but at seven, it gets sneaky, man. So what are you doing to to to, to kind of keep her off limits to the things that you don't want her to see? Oh yeah, I mean, it, I think it'll just naturally happen. She's gonna, you know, just figure it out, and then it's gonna be like, okay, well, here's here's what I do, and and explain, you know, what this is. It's like only like the, the whenever I have like sexual content you know in, in the in the language like sexual language is like yeah. that's the ones that i think is going to be the the toughest to explain um but uh you know other than that you know then i got like, you know, explain about like oh well what's it like being famous on youtube and why you want to be careful with it and it's like i don't want them you know thrown into that too soon you know you mean you don't want to Put your kids on YouTube at seven and exploit them. I mean, they could be famous too just by your name. You don't want to make bo- unboxings and all that kind of stuff. You don't want to. You don't want to have some little extra money coming in on the side, man. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know it'd be too. It's like too easy. But there's just like, it's like you know. Then they they have no, no uh, understanding of it at such a young age and no context. Yeah. And then later on, if they like regret that, then it's like, well, you. It's like you can't undo it. So it's like I'll let them grow up and make, you know figure it out, and make their own decisions, what it is they really want to do. Um, they're pretty creative, um, but I think back, I'm like, well, what did what did I want to do when I was that age? Like I, I was, I think if I had YouTube at that age, I would have probably just put out mm-hmm. every whatever crap I had. You know? <laughs> so <laughs> so <laughs> I'm kind of glad that I had, you know. D- decades of practice before yeah you know, you know, i was yeah. gonna play another video but since we're talking about you doing stuff at a young age and putting stuff stuff out there i intentionally try to find things when i interview someone when they're creative i intentionally try to go out and find things that they've done when they were young the younger the better i okay. got you just and, and i and it's almost like this was you put this out here for me, man. Uh, you put yeah. out recently a video of yourself as a kid. I gotta say, first of all, you a cute fucking kid, man. You you, <laughs> you were an adorable kid. This is a, a video of James, one of his earliest videos. I think you said that this is responsible for what people are getting now. This is you, I guess, doing like a Rocky parody, parody except it's just you in a yeah. punching bag, and it's adorable, man. I mean, I. I don't want to say it's cute to see a kid get beat down, but this really is one of the most one of the most adorable things that I've ever seen. Is you with a punching bag doing a Rocky parody, and that that punching bag is getting the best of you, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Child abuse by a bag. That's awesome, man. <laughs> you are you are adorable, man. <laughs> Uh, but uh, but did you do, did you do the editing on that too? 
Yeah, well, the, the editing on, on that particular video was done much later. Um, in fact, well, 30 years later. Um, but the, the original video was like 15 minutes. Uh, <laughs> you know, so, so, <laughs> so I gave you all the highlights there. Um, but I like when the bag gets up. I remember is... just like stopping the camera and then trying to like prop it up on things. That is what I was laughing at when the bag is getting up. Like, come on, man, come on. <laughs> <You know? Yeah. laughs> I couldn't tell if that was a if that was just a an accident or if the bag was supposed to actually be alive. You know, I think yeah, I yeah. love it. I love it though. I, that's why I have to ask you, man. You know, coming up as a kid, what 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 really did push your creativity? I mean, we see you started at a, as a, at an early age. Were you an actual nerd coming up uh, before you were angry video game nerd? What what what? Yeah, what what actually pushed your creativity? Um, I remember it being uh, nightmares. I think just having uh, nightmares about like monsters and stuff, and then I would become fascinated in monsters in the movies, and that kind of took the fear away, you know. And then I was. Yeah. It was the movie King Kong. It was the original from 33. Um, I tried to do a remake of that using action figures. So it was all like, you know, puppets and like anything I had, like Ninja Turtles or whatever. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and then, uh, you know, would move them on strings sometimes. And uh, that was where it started. But I didn't think it was going to go too far because then I tried um, drawing comics and animation and um, I was trying to figure out what was the the one that felt the easiest, I guess. Like, I don't mm -hmm. know, because animation was hard in its own way, because then you you don't have to get actors together. You know, you could do it all yourself, but it's so much more time consuming uh, than live action. So they, they they're both difficult in their own ways. And then I just eventually settled on live action and then, it, it, you know, went from there. Yeah. Yeah, I can tell you firsthand. Yeah, animation, not easy. <laughs> you know, that's what we did a whole eight years of doing animated reviews, and yeah, it took like five minutes. Took a week to make. So yeah, live. I wish I had done live action in the beginning, man. <laughs> I envy you oh, making that decision yeah. earlier, for not being stupid like me. Uh, oh, pick your poison. Basically, it's like which one is going to be, you know? <laughs> exactly, man. It was a great. Is a great attention grabber, but wow, the work on that man! And, you know, you started in two thousand six, and I think you know we were with another company at that time. We started, I think we were starting around the same time. But I, you know, I, man, if I could go back and do it different, I would have definitely yeah, yeah. made the decision you had. Uh, you, Are uh, we about the same age? I'm forty. I am not. I am forty nine, so I'm a decade ahead. Oh, okay. But, but no, nah, man, you, uh, <clears throat> I, I mean, I might be a decade ahead, but you're much smarter than me. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> um, so you were talking about how you wouldn't want to put your kids out there on mm -hmm. YouTube right now. Cause I mean, you know, you're, you've gotten massive fame on YouTube. You've gotten massive success on YouTube. And again, congratulations on that. You hear, so, you know, cause you hear celebrities always talking about, man, you know, I don't, I don't know if uh, you know, it's so hard right now. I don't know if I would have done it the same way again. I, I don't have any private life. It's, it's you know, it's uh, uh, it's not easy as it used to be. So you know, being someone who's a celebrity on YouTube. Now I know you've done acting and all that kind of stuff. So I'm not just trying to, I'm not trying to just you know place you as a solely YouTube celebrity. But oh, yeah. but but you know, being a being someone who is an online celebrity. Uh, do you feel like not only for yourself, but just overall, it's gotten to that point where internet fame can be comparable to the traditional fame that we've seen out there? Yeah, I mean, it is different, um, but it's I'm lucky that it's still in a very comfortable area. It's never um, like, you know, I can, you know, leave my house. Well, it's been a long time since I left my house, but when I can, it's like <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, you know, I'm not swarmed with people unless it's like a, a place where you know it's going to happen. Like in a GameStop, I can't walk into a GameStop. But I, <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> well, fortunately, but I, those are closing soon, so you won't have to worry. <laughs> figure it out. Like that's time that you figure it out. Like okay, well, this is a place where I'm going to get uh, noticed a lot, and this this place I won't. Um, you know, uh, so you also you, you can notice when someone's like you know looking at you, like they know who you are, like. Even because a lot of times um, I would say like maybe half the time people are too shy to come up and say anything. Yeah. So 
then it's like, well, look, I can tell that person wants to talk to me. They're real shy. Should I go over them and then talk to them? Or then is it like, what if you misinterpret it? What if it's like, oh, wait a minute. Like they, <laughs> yeah. they didn't know who you were. And now it's like, who's this weirdo? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I've been there, been there, man. I know how it is. Uh, oh. You know, you, you, I mean, I guess that's uh, really cool that you have that attitude because I think on the other side of it, besides, man, you know, what's it going to be like with me going out in public, uh, you seem like a pretty approachable person. Uh, and you seem like, the, you know, for you having that kind of, uh, rec you know, being recognized like you are, um, do you do you feel like that's that, that is something that you that has made it easier for you to do? Do you like approaching people? Do you like talking to people out in public? You know what? I do actually. Um I never thought I was a people person because I'm just very shy and uh as a kid I you know was just scared of people. Like I just wouldn't really like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like if you talk to me then that's fine, but I'm not going to talk to, you know, somebody else. But um then as I started getting into filmmaking, that totally changed it. That was sort of like a big social outlet for me because then, you know, you're, you're directing, you're, you mm -hmm. got actors, you, you're the whole point of making a film was to bring people together. So maybe in some way it was kind of like a, I don't know, a subconscious attempt to, um, to be more social. Yeah. I don't know. You know, <clears throat> uh, speaking of which, so you do so much, man, you have, uh, you have the video game side of things that you do. You have Cinemassacre, which is the the horror stuff that you do. And I gotta tell you, man, I I I I I, I love Dawn of the Dead first of all, and so yeah, I really, man, I love that video that you did where you went over to the the the, the mall. What's what's the what's the mall that you went to? It is the Mon Monroeville Mall. Is that it? Yeah, that that's right. Yeah. Yeah, I love that video, man, because I love that movie so much. And I didn't even know that mall was still there because malls, are, I, I don't even know if that mall is still there right now. But uh, people, yeah. so what I'm referencing here is a, a Cinemassacre tour site where you, you would go to certain locations of famous horror movies. And this is the, the mall that if you're a fan of the 1978 Dawn of the Dead, then you might be able to recognize even in the more modern form here, the mall that... Uh, that that was used in the film. To me, this looks like the part in the movie where uh, they keep having to open up the glass doors and that. Mike's looking to see if he can find an escalator. <laughs> Is that mall still yeah. there, by the way? <laughs> I do got to say that that was probably one of the the most ill-researched ones we ever did because we uh, we were in the area and we uh, well we did um, Night Living Dead the cemetery because mm -hmm. that's also there. Um, um, Oh, I forget the name off the top of my head. But anyway, after the cemetery, we're like, hey, you know, it's we're pretty close to the mall. Let's go over there and do the Dawn of the Dead mall. And then um, but usually I take a lot more screenshots and we'd really figure it out beforehand. Um, but still, it was fun to see the mall in person. And, um, <clears throat> you know, yeah, it was fun for me doing that, man. I, I had a lot of fun watching that. I really admire your your knowledge of horror. Uh, you know, I love that you, uh, that you, that you love horror so much. So, but you, you grew up in, uh, New Jersey and where you grew up in was, that was Haddonfield, New Jersey. That's, I believe, I believe, if, uh, I'm, I'm, I could be wrong and I might it actually be. wasn't uh, a That's probably just some misinformation, but it, but it's South Jersey though. It is yeah. South Jersey. So, okay. Yeah. So where, where are you, where are you located then? Where were you raised? Oh, Philadelphia. Well, Philadelphia's kind of been my home center because I, I was born in Philadelphia, lived there for um, like three years, but then we moved to South Jersey. Then um, I moved back to Philly for college. And, you know, I've been all around the Philly and South mm -hmm. Jersey area. So if you were to just make like a radius, that's kind of, I always just say Philadelphia. That's the, you know. How'd you end up in Jersey? I guess my my parents moved there when I was young. I don't know why. Um, it was a, <laughs> and it's not even the, usually when people think Jersey, they think Jersey shore. Um, yeah. or like North Jersey when you're closer to New York city and everything. But we were in South Jersey, which is the pine barrens. And there's pretty much like nothing to do down there. It's all just like woods and very barren. Um, 
businesses don't stay open there very much, that everything closes down. Mm -hmm. Like there's so many, I, I can point to so many places I used to work at and they're gone. Like wow. they're just, they aren't there anymore. <laughs> like I used to work at a movie theater. Yeah. And this movie theater is gone. And like, uh, um, yeah. So it's, it's a ghost town. It, it definitely is. Wow, no wonder you getting beat up by punching bags. You had nothing else to do as a kid. <laughs> um, we had stuff like urban legends and stuff because there was like, you know, um, the, the Jersey Devil and stuff like that. But I would make up my own things. I would make up like, you know, just different ghost stories and stuff like that. Yeah, you even had a pilot about the Jersey Devil at one time, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, it was called... Uh, Legend of the Blue Moon. You know, I just happened to, <laughs> I didn't have it up, but I just happened to have a clip right here. Uh-oh. Da-da-da. Mystique Antiques. You know, man, I got to ask. So be between the horror and the, and, and the video games and, and, uh, and, and the filmmaking, and we're going to cover all that in a little bit. But so it seems like you were so into filmmaking movies, and especially horror, uh, so how did the video game aspect of everything take over? Oh, um, I mean, it, it goes back to its roots, I guess, when I first played them. But um, I associate most of my memories playing video games as like just getting pissed off all the time. <laughs> uh, even though, and it's such an interesting, uh, you know, relationship with games because like you would enjoy the game and you want to keep playing it, but you get mad at it. And it's like, I need to beat this game. I'm so pissed off. And as a kid, a lot of times I would like just you know scream or like flip out, throw the controller. And then one time my dad came in and said, you want me to smash it with the hammer? That'd be easier. And I'm like, no, 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 don't do that. <laughs> um, and and oh, I'm playing games with my kids a lot of times. And sometimes I'll be playing, I'll show them like an old game and I'll start getting real into it. And I'm like trying to beat this level and I'm getting frustrated. And, um, you know, I don't curse in front of them, but I'm still like just getting mad and they can see it. And they're like, Daddy, do you like this game or not? Like, I can't <laughs> tell. <laughs> you know, it's I got to tell you that uh, I love this character uh, that you that you've done. I think a lot of the reasons why I'm going to be honest with you, man. I think a lot of the reasons why this 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 is taken off for you in the video game area, at least on YouTube. I'm going to say it's that mouth, man. That mouth is a trademark. <laughs> that mouth. <laughs> when, you were, yeah. when you were coming up with this character, how did you come up with it? Did you rehearse the mouth? Did you? <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> well, I first started doing it in, in films. I didn't really know I was doing it at first. Um, I think it started where I was like drawing this, like, this comic series about like knights sword fighting. But they'd always have this expression. And while I'm drawing it, I would kind of make the expression of the character while I was doing it. So I'd be like, <laughs> yeah. and I'd do like these open mouth ones where I'd be like, and like a lot of times like friends would see me do it sometimes when I'd be like acting with them and they'd be like, Oh, that was really funny when you did that. And, and I never really noticed it until I saw like the playback one time. It was like in the, you know, the video we were filming, this was a long time ago. And then, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's kind of funny. I, maybe I should do that again. And then by the time I got to the character, those sort of became like his his go to facial expressions. Yeah, yeah I, I love it, man. That is me. I mean, you you are a cartoon character. You know, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I love that. I mean, I, and I love how it's become such a trademark of yours that you see it even like in the video game, man. They got the little eight bit mouth right there. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah no, that's, that's, that's awesome, man. Um, yeah. Oh, I think I might even have like some. Oh, yeah. yeah actually, hold on. <laughs> Don't tell me you have a, an actual plushie or a toy or something that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so send me stuff all the time. So somebody sent me this, and it's got the front. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's this. And uh and then there's this one. I, I think, man, I think that that was my favorite one, the one that's kind of wall eyed. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> And then um, my kids were in here one day and, uh, you know, sometimes I show them, you know, some of the old games in here. And um, my, my seven-year-old daughter, she goes, Daddy, that looks like you. And I was like, oh, wow, I'm going to have to tell you a story one day. 
<laughs> so they don't even know this character that well. To, to when they see the, the toys, they don't know that's you. I mean, they're going to figure out. I mean, she might have already figured out. But it's like, then there becomes the time of like, well, when are they even interested to know, really? So lots of times I just wait until like, okay, you're interested in this. You want to know about this now? Like, okay. All right, here you go. <laughs> that, that is hilarious, man. That is a, that's a great laugh. Have you, ever, have you thought about, actually, now I know we just talked about animation and we're like, ah, that's a little too hard. But have you ever thought about doing an animated character based on the, the angry video game nerd? Because it's well suited for that. Or do, you have, or do you already have something underway for that? Um, not underway, no, but I have thought about it a lot because, um, you know, it always goes back to that, uh, you know, battle of like, well, which is easier animation or film? And really there's no answer. It's just kind of like pick your poison, but, uh, like the animation is going to be so time consuming. Mm -hmm. Um, the only thing is that it at least makes, it eliminates the need to, you know, travel around as much and, uh, get actors and locations. So, I've thought about it. Um, even when I was making the nerd movie, I was like, at, at certain points, I was like, you know what? Maybe this should just be animated. I don't know. But then it was like, well, look, feature film animated, that's going to take years and years and mm -hmm. years. So it's like, either way, it's it's work. Yeah, so, no, that's true. And you already put a lot of work into what you do at the moment, which, like I said, I'd really respect and admire your productions uh, on presentation on this. You've gotten popular enough now to where and famous enough now to where well, you think something people you know they 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 pay attention uh you received a lot of media attention about mm -hmm. ghostbusters and let me see there yeah was, there was a there was even a here it is the new york times even when you said i'm not i'm not going to review this i got the video where you say that so we're talking about the 2016 ghostbusters and you're such a fan of Ghostbusters that at the time you said, you know what, I'm, I know I'm not going to like this going in. So why am I just going to walk in here and be an asshole about it? I'm going to just I'm I'm going to do a non review. Yeah, uh, the yeah. original, which we now have to call the 1984 <laughs> Ghostbusters, is a timeless classic. It's one of the greatest comedies ever made. But this one, judging from the trailers, it looks awful. So instead of doing what everybody else is going to do, go see the movie and then talk about how bad it is, I'm going to do something different, something unheard of. I'm not going to see it. Wow. What a novel concept, right? <laughs> you were about to say something. I'm sorry. No, no, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Because, um, uh, you know, the, the criticism was towards, like, the, that, that they thought that I was saying that the that the cast shouldn't be women or something but on the contrary that cast is great i mean that's um that you know uh, especially um hate mckinnon on snl like she's playing like 10 characters every you know week it's like crazy you know they're they're super talented so it, it had um uh like you know nothing to do with the cast or the gender you know the cast was great um <clears throat> But, you know, the clip right there, that was perfect. That says it all. It just was like, hey, you know, instead of criticizing this movie and, and everything, how about just not see it um, instead? Yeah. Because that's what everybody else does. Everybody else wants to just go see something and then hate it. Um, and I was like, well, look, the trailer doesn't look too good. I'm, I'm just not going to see it then. I, and for some yeah. reason, it's like Ghostbusters. It's such a big thing. Like, it's almost bigger than it really needs to be if you stop and think about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, well, I, I I just want to say that I agree with you 100. percent I got friends of mine and other people. I, I had to explain because everybody, you know, it was at the time of female empowerment. Well, you know, girl power and whatnot. And everybody, once you criticize something, everybody wants to assume that oh, you just don't like women, or you're, you know, oh, you just don't want to see women get ahead. Oh, I'm sorry, women can't have their Ghostbusters movie too. I said, man, it could have been a movie full of black people. It could have been been the black Ghostbusters. It just didn't seem, it didn't, it it just didn't seem sincere. The whole idea of putting a uh, female Ghostbusters in there, where there's so many other ideas that were out there already. You know, I'll be the one to tell you, I didn't, I I have no problem with women being Ghostbusters at all. Just just yeah. the way you put it together, I just didn't think it felt natural. So you know, sorry. yeah, yeah. Uh, but you got, but the the point is, is that you said that. 
All of a sudden, New York Times is reporting on what you're saying. I think you got some pushback from Patton Oswalt, who at first thought you were trying to be, you was just some internet incel, you know, nerd who was trying to go against this. Well, I didn't even think Patton Oswalt said anything bad. Like, I don't even remember him, him saying anything. I think he said, like, I'm not a fan of preemptive criticism. I like Cinemassacre. He even said, I like Cinemassacre. Ah, nice. Tweet. Yeah, and I was like, well, that doesn't sound negative to me. Um, and he's a comedian. He's a he's a stand-up comedian. It's yeah. like, you know, um, so, like, I don't think he said anything wrong from, from what I saw. Yeah, and I wasn't even trying to talk bad about Patton Oswalt. I'm not trying to put him in a bad frame yeah. at all, at all. No, I, it would. that was not even, if, and I, if it came across the way, I apologize. I wasn't trying to make him seem bad. Oh, no, not at all, yeah. But but a lot of people said that. A lot of people were like, oh, you know, fuck Patton Oswalt. I'm like, well, what? What did he do? What did he do? He's, he's fine with me. <laughs> oh, no, that was not That was not even my intention to say that, you know. Uh, oh, I, and I know, I know. Yeah, I, but no, what I was... Uh, Actually, like Patton Oswalt a lot. Um, you know what? I guess what what I'm what I'm saying is that you you form these opinions now, and you're famous enough to where they get picked up by somebody. You know, so whenever you're putting your opinions together, do you do you anticipate this kind of intention now? And, and when it does happen, what's going through your head? You said this about Ghostbusters, and all of a sudden, New York Times is writing about it. I mean, what's going on in your head when that happens? Um, I mean, like the day it happened, I was taking my daughter to swim class. So it was like, that was what I was thinking about. I didn't have time, you know? <laughs> um, yeah. But I mean, it, it's like the thing that I'm arguing about that my opinion is just a stupid trivial opinion. Cause that's what I do. I just do stupid trivial stuff to entertain people with. So my whole thing was just saying like, well, you know, Dan Aykroyd's been talking about Ghostbusters three for years and years and decades. And he's, and he said that they were going to have the old Ghostbusters in there to pass the torch, um, which they kind of did, but they they didn't have them play the Ghostbusters. They had it be like mm -hmm. they were playing other characters. So they, they disconnected it. And actually, like the best quote that I heard, um, my friend Andre, he said that, um, you know, if Boy Meets World could be set in the same universe as Girl Meets World, why couldn't Ghostbusters be set in the same universe as Ghostbusters? Because yeah. we, we wanted to see them pass the torch. We wanted to see new Ghostbusters, but we just wanted to see it be a passing of the torch and have it be like, have the old ones there and then set it up. But they, they split the universe. They just went into like a totally different thing. Um, but seeing more women in films is a great thing. Like we, we want to see more women in films, um, in action films and comedies, everything. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like that argument and then the stupid nerdy argument of mine we just crossed our streams. <laughs> Pun intended right there. Are you talking about, when you say Andre, are you talking about uh, uh, um, Black Nerd? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a friend of mine, man. That guy used to live here. We've met, yeah, we've, we used to hang out and whatnot. That, he's a great guy, man. Nice, awesome, yeah. Yeah, I know that he's in a, he's in your movie. He's in, he's in, a, he's in the, the Angry Video Game Nerd movie. Yeah, yeah. I recall all of the cartridges and buried them somewhere in the middle of the desert because the game was so bad. I have to save the fans. You know, you, you, so, you made this film, you've been in other films, you were about to be in one film that you invited to a horror movie, you couldn't do it because you were making your movie at the time, you're going to be in VHS, I believe, um, VHS, uh, uh, either one or two, I'm sorry if I can't remember. Oh, hmm. oh I'm not sure, yeah, I mean, I, I'm trying to think of what, what it is that uh, a movie that I'm going to be in. Um, I'm not sure, that, but that does sound kind of familiar, though, that there is something we were talking about, something that was in talks that uh, didn't happen. Yeah, I think it was, right now, yeah. you know, everything's been, yeah, like everything's been paused with, with everything for the time being. Um, so well, hopefully soon I can be in something again. Yeah. Well, that, no, that'd be great, man. I mean, I, I, I just... Considering everything that you're doing, uh, so was what was the passion growing? Up? Was was it was it a director? Was it filmmaking that you wanted to do when you were a kid? Um, yeah, I, I mean, it was just exploring different art forms, and then just settled on on film. Um, by the time I actually decided on it, it was like I was 15, um, and I was uh, making a film all by myself, and then showed it to my friends and they were like, Oh, this is cool. Can we be in it? I'm like, Oh yeah, yeah, totally. And then, um, we finished it out with like, with 
small cast, you know, my, my neighbors. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, um, after that, it was, you know, it was so much fun. I was like, wow, we got to do more, you know, this is great. Um, so from there, I just was like, I'm going to try to go all the way with this. Nice. So is that, would, would you, would you want to make that more of a career moving forward, directing and filmmaking? Um, yeah, I mean, like now it's, it, it's kind of complicated cause it's, it's so time consuming to make a film. It's such a big mm-hmm. decision. Like if, if you're going to make a feature length film, it's going to, you're going to dedicate years and years of your life, uh, you, your, your life to it. And, uh, you know, now, now I'm, I'm a parent and I can't just, you know, be absent and be like making a film for years and years. So now I got to like, you know, kind of put those to rest for, for a little while yeah. uh, until I find a, a more feasible way to do it. It's like, well, okay, I could just make it my day job where I just do that. And, but that would mean like, oh, well now I can't make ABGN or I can't do any of the things that pay the bills. Yeah. And now it's, you're just making this film and that's all you're going to be doing. Uh, Cause a film is yeah, it's, it's never a day job. It, it's more like it's an overtime job and that's, it's just a time consuming thing by nature of what it is. Um, so that's just something I got to figure out. So at, at this point, I, I think I'm happy with just making the, the web videos and entertaining people with that. Um, and, uh, doing some music videos and, uh, uh, got a book coming out. So I, I realize it's all about art. It doesn't really matter what it is. As long mm. as you're doing something and enjoying it, you know, that's all that matters. That's wow. That's this. I mean, I've always tried to put it into perspective. Like, what is it that is important as a creative? And I, you know, and I've, I felt how you feel right now, but I've never been able to kind of put it as as succinct and as eloquently as that. You know, it's just about the art, just doing what you like. It's not about trying to push it out there to make money or break into something. It's like if you can make, if you can support yourself and do it, that's what it's about. Wow, that's 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 a great way of putting that. Um, couple of things before we finish up here uh so is there any is there any big project that you've wanted to do anything but you do so much right now you know you have you, like you've just listed off everything you have and the things you want to do but what's the biggest thing that you want to do that you haven't been able to do yet because you're doing all of these other things um I guess it would be that it'd be the feature film. It's like, mm-hmm. it's a horror film, but I've thought about ways that could be adapted. Like maybe it could be a book instead, a graphic novel. Some, somebody even suggested a, a video game uh, of it. Uh, but you know, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, how do you balance all this stuff out already? I mean, obviously, you know, you're successful enough to where I'm sure you could afford a team of people if you want to. Do you have a team of people working for you, editors and people who do production stuff? Yeah, uh, ScreenWave uh, helps with all like the editing and stuff. I mean, it depends. It depends on the project. Like some of them I edit, but most of them they, they've been editing. Uh, they do a lot of the uh, the research, the games, and like a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of the production stuff. So it's basically um, they produce it. So uh, – so that takes a lot off my back. Otherwise, it wouldn't be possible. Like, I can't just do them up. I mean, I could do it, but then you're only going to see, like, three episodes a year or something. And, so. And so you, and who, who's the, who's the, who are the people that produce it for you? Who is that again? Uh, the main uh, – Ryan is the, is the owner of ScreenWave. The, the main people who work on the videos with me is uh, Justin and uh, Kieran and mm-hmm. uh, Tony. Um, Tony's mostly doing his own stuff right now, but, uh, um, you know, so – that the, that's the screen wave. That's like my immediate contacts. Uh, there's a whole office full of people. I gotta say, like I don't want to leave anybody out. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, my wife. You know, thanks to my wife for, you know, making it possible for me to do any of this. Now, so you, when you say making it possible for you, how's that? Oh, it's like you know, watching the kids during the day and everything. <laughs> yeah. It's a big deal, huge, huge deal. Um, does a lot of. Uh, not so fun stuff and helps with so many things behind the scenes that you'd never know. So, so big thanks to my wife. No, it's nice, man. You give a credit like that. That's great. You know, that's the, <laughs> guess that's, and that's a big important part of being married too. You know, you always got to give credit to your wife out there or your partner, whoever's out there. You're famous enough yeah. now also to where you can get uh, other celebrities on. Um, 
I was looking at how you got on Gilbert Gottfried uh, for yeah. one of your videos. Who the fuck goes there? <laughs> I can stick my cock in it. <laughs> so, and you also have uh, 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 you, you, you have Macaulay Culkin on once. Uh, so how do you go yeah. about getting these people on? What's this? A lovely um. Uh, it depends. It's always a different situation. Um, uh, Macaulay Culkin, well, he was watching my stuff for a long time, actually. Um, I, I was watching his stuff for a little bit longer, though. You know, Home Alone. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, of course. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. So it was kind of just like, you know, uh, two fans, um, you know, very mutual. We played the, uh, the Page Master game, which I think he, he said was his first time ever playing it. Um, so it was kind of funny playing video games that were based on his characters that he's played. Um, and then, uh, Gilbert Gottfried, uh, we reached out to him. Uh, Justin made a contact with him. I'm not sure exactly how he went about doing it, but, you know, he brought it to me and said, Hey, would you want to do something with Gilbert Gottfried? And I was like, um, yeah. Um, <laughs> so what is it going to be? So we did it. And, uh, yeah, I remember there's one part in that video, the one with Gilbert Gottfried, where I, I crack up. Um, and we left it in because it was just really funny um, oh, because cool. I was trying not to not to laugh. So I kind of like looked away from him for one minute. But then all I heard was the uh, the parrot from Aladdin shouting at me. And I, was <laughs> like, oh my God, and I, and I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome, man. Yeah. And he comes on as soon as you hit record. Like as soon as as soon as you say action, he's on um, everything up to that. He's. He's calm. He's low key. He's totally nice. Um, and then once the once you say go, it's like there goes the switch. Yeah, there's so many people like that. I would even say you're like that, man. You know? Yeah, that's really funny. You know what? Actually, somebody did say that about me when we were we were talking about Gilbert, Gilbert Godfrey because I was talking to somebody else who had worked with him, and he said the same thing. He was like, you know what? He kind of reminds me of you a little bit because as soon as you as soon as you go on, as soon as it's action, that's when you you switch, you know, yeah. personnel. No, it's true, man. I, I, like, I always wonder what it would be like to meet you. And I got to say, you know, uh, it's a, it, Hey, look, it's a very pleasant experience, man. You, you would just, you would just lay back and low key, man. Easy, easy to talk to, man. Um, I didn't know. Cause it's two things. Either you could have been really full of anxiety or you just could have been real shy, but man, you just, you just very, uh, conversational. I'm going to end this with the, even showing you, admit, I was going to bring this up with your kids. I just like looking at you doing this, man. Uh, this is you doing uh, you, you, the uh, uh, Super uh, Mario Maker. You're doing a level that your kids, uh, one of your kids made. And what I like about it is that I told you, you, you just, I, I've never seen you be the most natural as you are when you're talking about your kids right there. And I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. I mean, you, you know, you're playing yeah. a character sometimes and whatnot, but it's just, it's just fun to see you just kind of just come to life about your kids and the, the levels that they're making here and trying to play them. She's very creative, but she doesn't often think through the logistics. I think I helped her out a little. And how many of those courses can be beaten? Um, there's a... I would say more of them are possible than you think. And that's why it, it made it where I, I felt like I had to beat them because just to fully test it out and, and see if it was possible. And we have uh, two more of these videos coming out um, because I recorded for like, I recorded like three hours of that and then cut it <laughs> down to uh, 45 minutes total, split into three 15 minute videos. So you're going to see two more. Uh, parts to that coming up and there there are those courses get pretty crazy no that's that's awesome man i, I saw this and i thought that was uh thought that was a a, a lot of fun right there nah you yeah. know it's hey man i gotta tell you it has been uh it's been wonderful talking to you man it really has uh yeah, i didn't think it would be this this uh I knew it would be fun. I knew it would be fine. I didn't, th I didn't think anything bad about it at all. But I just had to say, I didn't think it would be this much fun. Don't take that oh. bad <laughs> at all. <laughs> have, you ever, uh, have you ever interviewed somebody that just was like exactly like the character? <laughs> you know what? I, I have not had somebody exactly like the character, but I've had somebody who I've had people who were just not interested at all. Oh, okay. Yeah. That, that's not often, but I've had some really 
some bad experiences where I I, ra- I I went to a rage about one of the experiences I had that went longer than the interview. So <laughs> it was oh, like, okay. yeah, but no, this has been this has been great, man. Um, I just want to say uh, I can tell you're a really genuine and and and, and just nice guy, man. I, and I think that you deserve all the success you get, and congratulations on that. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, it makes it a lot easier now to even see your face. I was getting tired of seeing your face. I was like, man, I can't even see my own video because this man over here. But now, like, oh, he's a pleasant guy. I don't mind looking at that face now. So thank you, man. Oh, thank you. All right, I'll, and I'll let you go. I appreciate it. Bye-bye. All right, cool. Bye. See ya. And, well, I guess I'll shut up. He's still there. I guess I'll press it yeah. again. <laughs> I wasn't sure if it was the real sign off or not. So, <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's see you later, man. Thanks. Yep. And oh, there he goes. He's gone. So, folks, uh, I want to thank all of you, of course, for watching. That was a really, I, I, I say fun a lot. I say, oh, that was awesome, but that was just really pleasant. That guy's very cool, man. I love that conversation. I just want to vi- that's one of the, I'm the, they're all great to do, but I got so many laughs and just enjoy being around that guy. I didn't know, I knew he'd be nice. I know he'd be that damn nice. But anyway, that was a, that, that was a very much a pleasure to do. So always a pleasure to be with you guys too. So thank you very much. And go watch his video game. I purchase, <laughs> go watch his video game. Go get his video game. The Angry Video Game Nerd 1 and 2 Deluxe is out now for PlayStation and Xbox. To the all new mysterious final chapter. Auto fire, so you don't have to break your controller hammering away at those buttons. <laughs> that is out right now. Get it today. I think it's like 15 bucks or something, so it's not even that expensive, but ours is a lot of fun. So get that now. Go to the Angry Video Game Nerd channel. It's out there everywhere. You can't miss it. Believe me, I can't. Like I said, I see it all the time. I'm trying to watch my own stuff. And go to our interview channel. You're probably here right now. If not, and you've seen it somewhere else, DT Conversations. That's DT Interviews. I really got to get that settled. But either way, join us over there. Also, catch us on DoubleToasted.com, where we do everything over there from pop culture discussions, movie reviews, and everything else. So, guys, thank you so much. We'll see you on the next one. If you want to get in contact with me, you can. You know, I told you, don't hesitate. Don't hesitate at all. Whether I'm awake, sleeping, I'm dreaming of you. If you can't reach me then, I'll, you can catch me later. Kcoolmans at gmail.com. That's K-C-O-O-L-M-A-N-Z at gmail.com. You email us with any kind of questions, comments, compliments, insults, input, and our advice. Hit us up on those social medias, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Just copy down that information right there. Memorize it. Love it. Use it. And if I'm too busy out there taking all your emails and phone calls well maybe one day i'll see you here in austin texas but do it when it's safe you know big roni we're about to get her everybody's getting vaccinated so when we all are let's hang let me know when you're coming to austin kcoolmans at gmail.com let me know if you're moving here or just simply passing through because i'd once again safely would love to hang out with you all right everybody that is it Pixie's been here the whole time. Pixie, this dog is so loyal right now. She loves doing these shows. Pixie, you want to say bye to the people? Say bye to the people out there. All right. All right, everybody, that is it. I'm getting out of here. Pixie's getting out of here. And we'll see you on the next one. Good night, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whenever you are listening to or watching this, goodbye. And stay toasty. Yeah, you're rear, rear.